I'm going to say something that a lot of people might consider strange. Okay. <laughs> but my artistic talent, I did not own it in this life. Mm -hmm. I had it in other lives because where I am and what I can do, and the fact that I have such a broad spectrum interest in mm -hmm. arts and craft, and I have some learning. Mm -hmm. She felt immediately that was exactly what I yeah. really wanted. Yeah. So that was my first ever urn mm -hmm. of Calabash. There are covers of Calabashes. Mm -hmm. But who do you compare my work to? Right. Yeah, because, because you, yes, you know show me the method. Mm -hmm. How do I do this? Fine. Mm -hmm. It's not like me go in your yard and I watch everything where you're doing. Yeah, that. yeah. No, I'm going to take what you have taught me. Wine, but I love wine. <laughs> so I. <He> does. <laughs> this light toss in the bottle, so I've. I'm done the mandala. You know, you could hang them up on your wall if you want, That's but right. some also use them as Your dishes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so they actually eat out of them. Welcome back to my channel it's your girl Mel and we are here today with another artist feature um, it's going to be two people but we are going to separate them into two videos and these are actually you know friends of the family and yeah they are coming so let's welcome them guys Too. Right? Yeah. <laughs> that is one big example of permaculture here. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> definitely. For sure. Who's not plant fowl, everybody? <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, we are here with Marcia Henry, yep. and she is one of the artists that we're featuring today. And she will just, you know, show us around and show us all her art pieces. So, yes. to take which, over from here. Of which there are many. Yes, oh, a yeah. lot. <laughs> and our love for music. Yes. <laughs> my fish. Mm -hmm. Lots of fish. Yes, so this is home, mm -hmm. which some say it's a gallery. Yes, it's definitely uh, a museum. By a now. lot of artists uh, mm, will do their work and sell them. And when you check them, I say, so show me where I say, boy, I'm not having, you know, mm -hmm. Philip and I have made a decision mm -hmm. that what we have as our art is what we can leave for our children as inheritance. Mm, okay. Because if you leave money, the value is going to go down. Mm -hmm. Land, yes, but you have to acquire it. But whatever you see is what we have decided to hold on to. So you normally just sell prints then? or We sell prints because if you sell a, an original, it's not that you've sold the rights to it to the person, they'll have to pay extra for that. You okay. still have the 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 ownership mm -hmm. to reproduce it so because we used to sell on the north coast we realized that not everybody can afford an original mm -hmm. so the idea of the reproductions became like our bread and butter mm -hmm. you reproduce it and people are more able mm -hmm. to afford a reproduction than they can an okay. original. so a lot of what we do in terms of art sales is, is through um, doing Reproductions, mm -hmm. okay. which, which allows a lot more people to get a yeah. piece of art. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, so this is 
Um, most of what you see, my work and my husband Philip, um, we have some other work of other artists, mainly like ceramics. Mm -hmm. And we have some African pieces, but generally whatever is on the wall is either my work or Philip's. Okay. Yes, yeah, so, and this is his workstation. So this is her husband's workstation, so he's currently working on a piece here. Yeah. What kind of medium is this? Is uh, this is acrylic on canvas. Okay. Living canvas. So. Mm -hmm. So he's basically painting this off of a picture? Photograph. Okay, right. a so photograph. I'm send a photograph and say, can I mm -hmm. get a painting of this? And you do that for them. All right, well, we will dive into Philip Henry's I art that. later I on. <laughs> this is your, your moment. <laughs> this is my desk. Okay, this is her desk. And I know people say my desk is a clutter. <laughs> I know where everything is i'm sure you do <laughs> if philip makes a mistake of taking something and borrowing it uh -huh. you know and immediately you know and then i put it somewhere and i'm saying where are you put me this away uh, it's on your desk i said that's not enough <laughs> you put it exactly where you found it yeah <laughs> so this is my desk and mm -hmm. um my tools are all here i'm working on this Okay. Male figure getting the um, anatomy and the muscle thing in yeah. place first and then. And this is this is clay, right? Yeah, this is clay. Okay. Yeah, so everything that I need, mm -hmm. uh, well, not really everything, most of what I need yes. sits right here. Yeah. And where do you get your clay from? We get our clay from two places. There's a um, a Ligani clay that we get in Kingston mm -hmm. that is harvested in Trenchtown. Oh, okay. And there's a um, Castleton clay, mm -hmm. which has a kind of reddish, reddish sepia, more it looks like the bristles of this brush. Mm -hmm. This is the color of the Castleton clay. Okay. Yeah. So we process the clay ourselves. Mm -hmm. And then do what we need to so, do. So it. this is this is more. This is ligani. Okay. It's a dark. So clay. is this the same clay? That's also ligani. When it's dried, it it becomes like right. When it is fired, it tends to go back to get in this brown oh, color. Oh, okay. Mm. All right. But um, this is it. <laughs> this is all work. Mm -hmm. um, so like I said, Philip and my yeah yes. so well, the one that you can clearly see say marcia yeah, you know those exactly. are her right. pieces and then the other ones would say philip yeah uh, you you see yeah so saying? these are some of some of the paintings that they have and these are all acrylic Acrylics, okay because oil paints are the tendency to be toxic one mm -hmm. than is acrylic. yeah and we read where it is said that oil paintings tend to send off a few mm -hmm. even years after the painting has oh, been done. Okay. And I'm sensitive to a lot of things. Mm -hmm. So I can't say I've ever I've never painted with oils. Oh, okay. In the earlier years Philip did, but he's more into acrylics and he do like colored pastels, but mm -hmm. when I paint it's exclusively acrylics. Okay. Yeah. And how many years have you been doing this now? <laughs> oh, um, I'm going to say something that a lot of people might consider strange. Okay. <laughs> but my artistic talent, I did not own it in this life. Mm -hmm. I had it in other lives because where I am and what I can do, and the fact that I have such a broad spectrum in interest in mm -hmm. arts and craft. I know you have learn it. Mm -hmm. I know you have learn it. I remember my mother selling my work from when I was 12. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's been, a, it's been a long road. I've been involved in art. And I love sciences. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I am scientific-minded and, and animal-minded. So, mm -hmm. yeah, a lot of what I am and who I am, mm -hmm. I don't attribute it to this life. Only. Okay. I... I honestly believe that I acquired these talents from 
many lifetimes yeah. back. So I'm and it sure. just yeah, definitely. Because sure. even when it comes to my calabash work, mm -hmm. the calabash is over here. For years I never did anything with calabash. I did with clay. Mm -hmm. But then I met this gentleman by the name of Jeff Priest. I'll show you a painting of his back there. Mm -hmm. And he saw the work that I did with ceramics. Alright, this is one of my ceramic pieces. He oh, saw one ceramic. of my he saw one of my ceramic pieces. Mm -hmm. And he said, But you do very well with it with it with these yeah. symbols and things. So he said to me, I'm going to give you a calabash mm -hmm. and I'll allow you to put something on it. Mm -hmm. And even though I was not used to carving on a surface yeah. like that, um, I found myself drawn to it. Mm -hmm. And I got hooked. So basically you stumbled upon it based on I a friend that you had. Precisely, because he made a living from carving calabashes. Oh. And he saw in me the ability to mm -hmm. Well, that's calabash. nice that he even, he even came to you and basically share you know, even though that's his category, he yeah. wasn't afraid to share it with you yeah, and say, I'm eternally grateful to him. <laughs> yeah. For that. Um, so, I, this is Calabash. Mm -hmm. I am an educator as well. So, when I first got involved with Calabashes, I said, I need to learn about them. Mm -hmm. So, I went to the Institute of Jamaica mm -hmm. and I researched Calabash in Jamaica. Mm -hmm found what they call them, they call them Tuk Tuk, Paki, Kodi, and Calabash. Uh -huh. And there was something else I learned, not at the institute, but in speaking to people, I learned that Jamaicans would say, don't believe in a Calabash tree. <laughs> and I was curious, but then nobody could tell me why. Yeah. So I remember reading this book written by an African, uh -huh. and he spoke of the spiritual connection that his grandfather had with Calabashes. Mm -hmm. He was like the chief of the village. And in his little um, cottage was a section which, for want of a better word, let's refer to it as a shrine. Mm -hmm. and, and at this shrine, he would keep a gourd mm -hmm. for each person who had passed in that village. Mm. And he said, a yeah, part of their spirit is contained in the calabash. Oh. So then I got curious and decided to do further research and find out if it is an African yeah. intention and discovered that whenever an African here who was enslaved died because they were not able to perform their normal rituals. Mm -hmm. When they buried an African, they would plant a calabash stick because it grows from the stick. Oh. Hence the yeah. dump dump in a calabash mm -hmm. tree. So, That's um, interesting. I must tell you one story though that made me believe that a girlfriend of mine who had, <coughs> pardon me, she had um, known of my love for ceramics mm -hmm. and she had bought a couple of pieces and her dad died and she called me one day and said, I need an urn for daddy's remains. Mm -hmm. And I knew she was talking about the ceramic piece, but mm -hmm. something spoke to me. I think it was her dad, because he had her clothes. And he said, no, I don't want uh, ceramic. I want calabash. Mm -hmm. And I went where I, I get them. Mm -hmm. And I looked through them, and he's like, I felt like he had his hand on my shoulder. Mm -hmm. And when I took up one, I didn't get the approval and then I took up oh. one and it's like there was something that says this is the one. Yeah, this is the right one. So I, I didn't say anything to her. Mm -hmm. I just went ahead and I thought about him. He used to love reading books and there's an African motif that looks like a book. Mm -hmm. So I said I have to include that and there were some other designs. I have a book that I keep designs mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm leaving through it and Whenever I stopped at one, I said, this is the one he wants. Mm -hmm. So I did the calabash, and then I felt the need to put some copper on it. Mm -hmm. The lid would have been copper, yes, but I wanted to do some inlays on the calabash itself. Mm -hmm. But I couldn't get no copper sheeting. It's like the company that used to sell it, I couldn't get them. And it took me three weeks to finally track down some sheet copper, mm -hmm. cut it, 
first thing. How am I going to do this? Because I needed a, a cup shape. So I got a piece of wood and I carved out the house. <laughs> yeah. And I put the um, sheet, the copper sheet, and I pounded it mm -hmm. until it got the shape. And I put that on it. Mm. The day when I went to deliver it, she don't know nothing, you know. Mm -hmm. I said to her, I have daddy's um, urn. She said, Lord, we can't wait to see it. She said, I'm going to take out the stand and I'm going to put it on the table. She said, oh, I'm going to get a stand with this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I said, yes, and I'm going to take out the calabash now. She was in her kitchen and I was at the kitchen counter. She said, she got down so. Mm. That she said, week. <laughs> she said, this is, this is, she said, I, I can't, she couldn't talk. Mm -hmm. So if I used to say what she was saying, she felt immediately that was exactly what I yeah. really wanted. Yeah. So that was my first ever urn mm -hmm. of calabash. Since then, I've made quite a few. Mm -hmm. In fact, shortly after hers, a friend of mine, two friends in fact, mm -hmm. both were ailing. And I told him about this calabash and my wife said, make one for me. Mm -hmm. I started it, but for the life of me, could I finish it? <laughs> he said, well, this woman is still alive. Well, make yeah, alive. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's just so weird. We <laughs> couldn't do it, so she kept calling her, asking, you finished my thing yet? I said, yeah, man, coming along. But then it got to me that, you know, something I need to make my own first. So you made your so, own? <laughs> we went to this calabash tree mm -hmm. and this calabash was strapped between two branches mm -hmm. one branch was here yeah and one and on one that side here so mm -hmm. i sent philip up in the tree and he had to brace one and then he brace one and then when i would pick it but it was like you see it's a pink calabash yeah and I was doing some research. I, I've, I'm always looking at African designs on courts. And I cannot remember the name of the tribe. It starts with a U. But they used to put patterns on calabash, but they never used them. Mm. They were strictly just a thing of beauty mm -hmm. that they had. But it was like using it for storage or whatever. So. This is a pattern I got, and I find that I'm drawn to mm -hmm. using African symbols and patterns. So this yeah. is my urn. So this is your personal this is urn. This my personal urn. And this is the copper sheet you were talking this about. This is a copper, but for daddy's own, like, the circular area here, mm -hmm. I made a, a piece of copper, like I said, beat it mm -hmm. until it become like a cup, and I oh. attached it. So okay. That was it. So this is mine. Yeah, that's so beautiful. So once I was able to do mine, mm -hmm. you I could. Was able, but then could I give it to her? Because <laughs> cause it's kind of like, you know, I earn, creating an urn is like you're, you're saying, you know, you're it's after accepting that day. Yeah. It's after she passed me, kept out of her yard and said, This is <laughs> And then her husband said, You're not doing well, you're not doing well, you're not doing well, you want this one, you oh, want gosh. that one. Oh gosh. He said, All right, so, so I did this and he saw it, and I'm happy that I did mm -hmm. it. And there are a couple more that I've done, but yeah. including your mother's. And mommy has one coming too. <laughs> it's actually oh, finished. Right. It's finished. I've finished doing the pattern, but I haven't got the cup of sheeting. I've oh, done so have you seen it already, mommy? Yeah, yeah man, she's, I, I she glimpsed it. Yeah, well, yeah. It was work in progress. But okay. Yeah, yeah. And hers, I wouldn't have given her just a plain round calabash. Yeah. Because mommy has rhythm yes. like yes. <laughs> Mommy has so a I lot of curves right. and stuff to so her. She was a calabash that had a lot of character and mm -hmm. things. So. I just know that that would suit her. So yeah, I, I mean the I idea. Yeah. Yes. 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 <laughs> the idea is definitely nice to know that, um, especially if you're planning on being cremated and stuff, that you would know from before you pass away, you would yeah, know what it is so. that people would see you as. Yeah. So I think you know, that's that's really really. Already from before and put it somewhere it's a decoration piece like how she has hers here yeah when the time comes yeah you just use it you but know? i must tell you this story too um we were invited to the funeral of 
some friends of Mr. T's yeah. brother. He died in the States like two years prior. Mm-hmm. And they finally brought down the ashes in an urn. So we were going to the funeral. On our way, we just leave out of the house heading for snow hill. Mm-hmm. And we get a call. Mm-hmm. Say, the urn was on a table in the church. Mm-hmm. There was a fan going and some breeze blew up, lit down the a photograph of the man, mm-hmm. lick off the urn off of the table, oh, splat out. What? Oh my God. Ashes were all over the. Oh my God. So they called me and said, Miss Henry, you have any urn? Because I knew that I did. Yeah. So I had to rush to the shop, turn back, go to the shop. And my aunt's urn, she's still alive. And I should have posted to them in Philadelphia. Yeah. Was there. So we said, these are the only one I have yeah. ready. Yeah. So we grabbed it and carried it to the church. Of course, don't show it. Scrape up the <laughs> took out the splinters and. Well, he definitely didn't want to disappear just so. <laughs> so, um, and he was married. He was married in the Calabash urn, so. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, it's the first I actually heard about Calabash being used as an urn. Yeah. But, um, well, she does some of these as, you know, you could hang them up on your wall if you want. That's but right. some also use them as You're dishes. Here, yeah. 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 So they actually eat out of them. Because we have some at home, right, mommy? Sure. That we eat out of. And we have some that we also have on the wall. <laughs> yeah. So these are, you know, this is a lion. So, you know, she does a bunch of different stuff. And I'm sure if you would have like a specific design that you're interested in, she would also see to it that you could get something like that. What are like the price ranges of something like this now? All right. Well, I price them based on the amount of detail that's on them because mm-hmm. I first draw a design and then I carve. Mm-hmm. I do the lines and then I clear out like areas like this I take off totally. Uh-huh. As I can't even start with the drawing, you know, I have been present because she's my sister by the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, when she takes the Calabash that just came from the tree. It gets dry for a while, and then it. she cut it and scrape it all. No, I have to cut it while it's still green. Oh yeah, but I mean, scrape the, uh, that an process alone. Yeah, I can imagine that <laughs> process alone take hours. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Especially if she like your bags, for example, when you only have a small opening. Right. I have watched her. I I, I was in awe. Mm-hmm. The patience, the 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 skill. Mm-hmm. To, to do all that so this is not even this is the end product I mean she starts from scratch, scratch yeah now you can <laughs> <laughs> I'm always the historian oh, you know? right. yes. <laughs> um, so some people might just want a design around the rim mm-hmm. which um, I'd sell that for like a $1200 depending on the size of mm-hmm. course which is uh, if, if less than some, ten dollar US. If something yes. like this, now this is a lot yeah. of work. For the simple reason that you have to consider all the little lines that I have to draw, even lines, and then I draw, and then I have to carve. So it, it time consuming. And the dark burn. area is burning. I burn. have to burn it. Yeah. So that is another time consuming yeah. process. So burn to darken because. Like I say, I researched calabashes and I learned that um, calabash was one of the first non-food crops mm-hmm. that early man planted. Mm-hmm. Because the use of the calabashes, like, you'd be surprised mm-hmm. at how many uses. And it, in fact, the insides of it, um, like in the Philippines, they scoop out the insides and they boil for an hour. And they drink that liquid and they call it the miracle fruit. Oh. That's how they refer to calabashes. Mm-hmm. So all over the world, in fact, I've seen calabashes done by craftsmen in Switzerland. Mm-hmm. And they have like a vine variety, always grows on trees. Yeah. And in Africa, they have a lot of vine growers, which can 
Get yeah. this on really. And they oh, actually use them to carry water. I what? Mean, them use them as crib. As crib. For babies. That's how big they get. So big. Wow. Yes. yes. So there's, I mean, they have tiny ones. Yeah. Which I have a few. The shape. Mm -hmm. of the, what it does is that they, the, the vine ones have a lot more variety in terms of shape. Mm -hmm. The tree ones then mainly to be round yeah. or teardrop in shape. Yeah. And this one here. Oh yeah, that would be like a teardrop. This one, I actually got this calabash from a, 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 an Arawak in Dominica. Mm. And he has like the, the wall in his kitchen, the walls of his kitchen. Mm -hmm. He does get the calabashes, cut them in half, clean them out, and he hangs them on his wall. So they, even though he doesn't do anything on them, still look so even in the amazing. ceiling of his kitchen, he cuts wow. them and he hangs them up. So it is it was for me when I went there and he saw how taken I was in about two or three mm -hmm. of those. Okay. But um, yeah. So in terms of cost now, mm -hmm. I can't sell this for under three thousand dollars. Yeah, which is least. what uh, three thousand would be. Not even well, just twenty US. Basically. Yeah, I mean, come 20, on, for 20. all that work, yeah. yeah, should be more than but double. I try. I understand our human connection with creative energy because mm -hmm. I've been taught art at college level and I've been to teach the adults and encountering their resistance to doing art because they are so fearful mm -hmm. that they won't do well. Yeah, because so they always me, have to be perfect. Yeah, so in teaching people like this, whatever comes out of you, mm -hmm. I'm highly appreciative of it. Or if you wish to express your creative yeah. energy, that is your creative yeah. energy. Don't look at somebody else's, do what you feel and that is what comes out. Some mm -hmm. people are very appreciative of what they can do with yeah. their creative ability well that's that's we all have. yeah everybody has a, a little artist no, man, <laughs> within even are even big yeah you have to consider even when you do your year mm -hmm. the clothes that you put on and what everything yeah to. yeah that's true all of that is art yeah all of that you're is a walking side. art piece basically yeah and i choose to express in this way mm -hmm. that is me yeah and even though Somebody else who do calabashes and I do calabashes. Your calabash is going to be what you produce. Yeah. Not yeah. Be appreciative of what it is that you're able to do. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. true. That's true. Yeah, yeah, and talking about clothes and stuff, so she's also doing all these here. I I saw these beaded necklaces and I thought maybe done by um Native American Indians. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to learn how to do them, but try as I might, could I get it? <laughs> so I had to go on some tutorials. Yeah. And um, even people in, in um, some European countries, they do some fabulous beating. Mm -hmm. So of course I tried, but the beads that I was using were too big and irregular. Mm -hmm. So of course I tried and tried and I eventually cut the beads and went through the painstaking process mm -hmm. of learning. So, I learned and I I like beading. Yeah. So I'm like sure it, it takes like meditation a bit, don't it? It, it does, it does. <laughs> I mean from, from our from here in Jamaica we also always see like they use the regular you know like this the the Rasta colours yeah. or the Jamaican colours. Right. But these tend to be, you know, more extravagant mm. than what we have here. yeah the african oh, ones are yeah. really really Whoa. extravagant <laughs> yeah i always yeah. see it like in documentaries and stuff when they show the culture of the people and oh, you have the woman yeah. with all the beads and oh, yeah uh -huh. everywhere and it's so beautiful and i'm like wow that's so so much work so, that is put into it and when i do these i say i'm i'm listening to the tutoring of my ancestors because mm -hmm. um I, I think most countries at some point are beating, mm -hmm. but it is it is it is something that gives me meditation time because mm -hmm. it's just me and me and my thread and the beats and I'm just falling. But and so I'm able to meditate on a level that 
is relaxing mm -hmm. and it is empowering. Yeah. And I enjoy that. And for me, anybody who wants to learn it, I'm willing to teach it. Yeah. You know, I've, I've had encounters over the years with artists who do things a certain way. And out of curious, they say, how do you do that? Mm -hmm. Some, not as much as I would have liked, were more than willing to share. Mm -hmm. But you have some say, no, I can't tell you that. Yeah, thing. because you know, that's my secret got, and then you got to take I'm over like, my style. So and you, yeah. Yeah, I'm gone. yeah, what is going, going to be to left know, of it? Right? Yeah, it's yeah. Going to going to yeah. Mm -hmm. it has, it, it's yeah, me. it's kind of foolish too, because it's not like, like you would be any competition or anything. Exactly. If you, I mean, Most in their eyes, that. it would be competition. Say it's a, somebody it's else from Portland. For them, it would be a sense yeah, of competition. Again, for example, as Marcia was saying before, they would probably everybody have their own design exactly. eventually. What a piece so I mean, it would broaden the spectrum, but not necessarily being a, a competition. But I could also understand the fear of someone just being a copycat and learning your way and just con like one to one but, but, but trying to recreate even it. Even if it is your way. Mm -hmm. There are there are covers of calabashes, mm -hmm. but who do you compare my work to? No, yeah, because, because you yes, you show me the do. method. Mm -hmm. How do I do this? Fine. Mm -hmm. It's not like me go in your yard and I watch everything where you do. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm going to take what you have taught me. It's a technique that I you have learned, but horizons. the design mm -hmm. is by creating personal. different designs. So, for me, how much of my work can you copy? Mm -hmm. How much are you going to be able to see the copy? I mean, you definitely are going to always see the difference. Yeah, but then, if you keep <coughs> doing what somebody else does, there's no fulfillment for you. Yeah. When you can create something, because I said to people, I use a graph book. Mm -hmm. And I create designs. So I, whoever I teach beading, I say, get yourself a graph book. Mm -hmm. You doodle out a little pattern, work it out on your graph paper. Mm -hmm. And then tackle it with the method of beading that I have taught yeah. you. So, how may I go well and find that? Yeah. If everybody throughout the journey basic held knowledge. on to what they knew. Yeah, yeah, it would definitely be not be passed on. Yeah, that. nothing would be left. Like. It's imperative to say you do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, so as a, and even as a teacher, mm -hmm. for me, imparting knowledge is the opportunity to teach. Mm -hmm. And I was teaching teachers to teach visual art. Mm -hmm. That was the highlight for me yeah. of my career as an artist to know that I teach a class of 28 people. Mm -hmm. And I cannot even quantify how many more. Yeah, yeah, it's just a big chain reaction. Yeah, it's like dropping up people in the Yeah, family. and it just. <laughs> yeah. So, we can't hold because to me that is selfishness. Yeah. Whatever you have, you have learned, mm -hmm. you need to pass it on. Mm, I think so too. You must pass it on because you, yeah. you ain't gonna always be here. Mm -hmm. So make somebody else take it around with it. Yeah. You know, so I, 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 to be honest with you, Melody, I cannot hold on to things. Mm -hmm. I cannot hold on. People ask me, what you use, me tell them, buy this, buy that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I guess that would be the true form of an artist, you know, sharing, sharing what you know, keep trying to keep it alive. Yeah, and, and one of the things that Philip and I will talk about, people look at us and say, boy, I'm not supposed to reach. We say, yes, we're rich in our ass because it. <laughs> <laughs> we're rich in the sense of the, the talent that we have. Mm -hmm. We're rich in the sense of People have come, young people, age people, can you teach me this, can you teach me that? Mm -hmm. I'm going to teach you it. So for me, it's not monetary yeah. gain, but it's what the universe presents mm -hmm. in terms of people around me and all of that, which I have proven time and time again. Yeah. If it's a dollar that you're after, you're tunnel vision mm -hmm. and you can't really explore on a broader scale yeah. if you're just doing it for the love. For me, the love of it. That is, my that is fulfillment enough. That is fulfillment yeah. enough. Yeah. I couldn't ask some more. So yeah, this is it for me. I mean, so.
so so far we have seen that you do acrylic paintings you do calabash carvings you do jewelry you do clay is mm -hmm. there anything else that you stone paintings yes where is it i don't know where yeah, 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 yeah. Bottle, i do have the stone but i can show you the bottle and the cup mm -hmm. that's one this is one. So she does stone paintings like these as well. So you can also see a lot can of details. Yeah, it can be a paperweight. A lot of details go into these. And each dot. <laughs> you dip into paint and then you place it that. <laughs> dip into the so it, Dip on that. <laughs> dip on that. <laughs> dip on that. <laughs> dip on so this that. is a coffee mug. Okay. That I did using red, green, and gold, of course. Mm -hmm. And then once you put the paint on it, do you bake it or how or does this it... is what you call a multi-surface paint. Mm -hmm. You put it on, you can either wait 21 days for it to be totally cured, mm -hmm. or I can put it in the oven at 350 degrees for 30 minutes. Okay. And that will cure it. Yeah. And wine, but I love wine. <laughs> So I <laughs> this light toss in the bottle, so I've um done the mandala and a couple of yeah. Bottles. I mean, it definitely looks prettier than yeah. what it was before. <laughs> exactly. Normally, people just throw them out. Yeah. I cannot. I'm also an environmentalist, so recycling. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, definitely. Okay. Yes, mandalas. And these. Remember when we saw the last artist, Mayumi was speaking about the type of paintings that she loves, and this is yes. one of them. This is my favorite, absolute favorite of the passion fruit flower. Mm -hmm. I've always loved it. The first time I saw her even starting it, because I remember when you started it. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, one day I shall have one for myself. <laughs> And then mommy bought me one for my birthday. Mm -hmm. So I have the, the, the smaller version of it. So I'm very happy for that. Yes, and I still have it, it's at home. Hey my loves, so this will be pretty much it for this specific video. I will have a part two coming to Marcia Henry where she had a little, um, you know, sit down talk with mommy and what artists are going through and stuff like that so we are just going to take you know a more in detail look at some of her art pieces and then we will finish off this video for today so i hope you enjoyed this this will become a series where we you know interview a few different artists to try and give them some more exposure especially with this whole covid thing going on and you know not many tourists coming around and stuff we're just trying to give them a little you know what should i say a lending hand in giving them some exposure and bringing them back to the forefront of the people so i hope you enjoyed the video and let's just you know continue looking at her creative art pieces I will be posting her information at the end of the video, so if you are interested in anything that you have seen here, or you know your, your own little unique item, as we heard before, she creates urns made from calabash and stuff. So yeah, um, I'll post her information at the end, so if there's any form of interest, you can use that information and contact her personally.
so guys that was pretty much it for her art pieces um in a few seconds you will get to see her instagram which there is also a number provided on there so if you're interested in contacting her this is the information that i have for you and yeah i just want to say thank you guys so much for tuning in thank you for you know if you reach this part for enjoying the video for this long and please remember to like share and subscribe and i will see you in my next video bye y'all